Hello, this is Trivi, giving you a video on some of the common pitfalls and mistakes that I've seen new and perhaps even uh, amateur mappers make, or perhaps even some more advanced ones I've seen uh, uh, make some of these mistakes. Um, a really simple one is making sure that you have the right scale, and I don't mean scale as in grid scale, I mean scale as in the scale of the world. I did see an example where somebody made their almost their entire map, you know, did all the detailed brushwork and everything, and then when they started putting props in, they realized that they had made everything way too big. Um, a really simple way of avoiding this is to plonk an info player start down in your map before you even begin really doing anything. So put the floor down, stick your man in, and start building around him. And it should give you an idea of how big the map should be. Um, the size of this model uh, should reflect how big the player is in game. Pardon me. Um, another thing you can do is also just plonk a door prop down, and that will also help give you an idea of scale, you know, how big you should make your door frames, etc, etc. Uh, now the next thing that I see people do very often is this. So they'll make a big block of skybox and then hollow it out, put it around their entire map, and hey presto, there you go, you never get a leak ever again. Um, now there are a few reasons why this is uh, a bad thing to do. Uh, one of them is uh, it lets you get into really bad mapping habits and you won't realize you're getting into them because the, the map isn't picking up the leaks when they get compiled. So um, the reason that this is bad is if you do have something that would otherwise constitute as a leak, um, even though you're not immediately being presented with a leak error, it can create janky issues to do with lighting. Um, so shadows might act really weird. You might have weird shapes on the walls for no reason, light leaking in, and, you know, all just sort of weird stuff going on in your map that you can't really explain. Um, and that's probably because you've done this kind of skybox and you have a leak within your geometry somewhere. Um, another thing is, um, if that wasn't enough to, to not convince you, is that it causes the uh, the engine to split your map up into way, 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 way more sections than it needs to. Um, and these things are called viz leaves. So to demonstrate this, if I quickly just build this map, let's just uh, do that, hit the button. No leaks, but if we have a look at our portal file, if you've got a map and portal file, it will now show you how the engine has split your map. So what these little uh, sort of blue areas represent is when you're in your map running around, um, in order to optimize um, what is rendered as much as possible, it will use these sections to determine what parts of the map it can turn on or off. So if you're on one side of the map, it won't render the other side of the map that you can't see, right? Basic, you know, very basic way of putting it. And we can already see by the way that this has been constructed that it's already splitting the map into sections that the player can't even reach. And what this is gonna do is increase your compile time um, an incredible amount, especially as your map gets more complicated. Um, you're just gonna be having cuts absolutely everywhere. And to sort of compare what this looks like in comparison to how your map should be skyboxed, um, this is how you should be doing it. The best way to sort of try and describe this is everything in source is a room. Everything is indoors and you're just using um, basically, you know, tools and illusions to make it appear like it's outdoors. So this is built basically like a room, you know, you've got a, like a fence around it, but then you've got the skybox sealing it in as if it is just an indoor room. And if we compile this now and show the, the portals, they're practically all gone. Now, for whatever reason, um, it's still splitting this up like this. This is because of the size of the room and how it is placed on the grid, uh, I reckon. So if we select all this and move it so that it's perfectly within like a square here and then rebuild it and test it, let's have a look. There are ways to fix that. 
uh, not point file, sorry, portal file. And now you can see that it's there's no lines anywhere because of the way it sort of uh, calculates space. But if we just put it back to where it was before and uh, quickly compile it and take a look. But regardless, it has still split it up in a way that is far less than what it was uh, before. So before we had, what, 16, 20, something crazy sections. And the amount of cuts that it makes is going to slow down your compile time a lot. Um, and you really don't want that because if you've been lighting your map well, the lighting alone is going to take a lot of compile time. And you don't want the compile time of having to make all those unnecessary cuts um, as well. Um, so yeah, build your skyboxes properly and don't box them up. Um, and going on from portals, this leads into funk detail. So the way that you're supposed to be making your maps is you block them out very, very simply, like no detailing whatsoever. Uh, so you're just building room by room by room and everything should basically be made out of simple cuboid shapes. Um, but say you want to, you know, do something more interesting and you're starting to put pillars and stuff in your map. And so say, you, you know, you've built a nice thingy in your map. You've made lots of cuts in it. It's all very interesting. You compile. It compiles relatively okay. But then let's take a look at the, the portal file. And oh dear, it's uh, splitting your map up into all these sections uh, that it shouldn't really be doing because this is just one room and this is just... Uh, a detail in the room. Now there's a really f fancy, not fancy, very handy entity to deal with this called Funk Detail. If you click on a on an object, a, a brush, and click to entity, it will change it into a Funk Detail. And you'll see the difference now when I compile and show the, the portal again. It no longer uses that brush and its faces and edges to cut the map up anymore. Um, so, you know, just to reiterate, make your rooms really simple and blocky and then make stuff like your skirting boards, your fancy ceilings, your stuff that you're cutting into, pillars, all that sort of stuff should be funk detail. Um, uh, but say that this was like really, really huge and it was like blocking, uh, you know, player visibility a lot and therefore it should sort of, sort of count... Uh, when the compiler splits the map up into sections. Well, what you do is you'd make this into a really simpler sort of block shape and then sort of add slopes and stuff onto it, sort of augmenting your simple shape. And then you make those augmentations funk detail. So um, I, I don't want to demonstrate because it would take too long, but say if you made this like really, really big, you'd make the majority of it like a cube so you'd pl probably make the cube like like this so that would be your world brush right there and then you'd build these bits on on top the bits where it's sloping and, and cut up weirdly so that when it makes the portals it's still splitting your map up into uh, proper sort of cuboid shapes as it should do rather than trying to use all these weird slopes and stuff and it just makes a complete mess of things um, second of all, not second of all, next, grid size. So for whatever reason, when I see a lot of people mapping on, on grid size one, um, and I don't care how meticulous you think you're going to be, you will eventually mess up and uh, your map is going to take not only a lot longer to compile because as you notice with the way that these portals are made up so say if you're making you know little rooms and stuff and you're just one teeny weeny sort of uh, unit out and you compile your map instead of being you know nice and square like it is now it's gonna start cutting things up even more when it really shouldn't be um, so really you should only be using grid size one if you're, you know, for very specific things. And always go back to say 16. I think 16, I mean, this is just personal preference. I think 16 is a very comfortable grid size to work with when you're blocking your maps out like this. Um, but a really sort of neat, so say you're putting props down 
and you're on grid size one because you're just like, oh, you know, I just want to place my props um, exactly where I want them to be. And you're like, mm, this still isn't fine enough for me. If you hold down Alt when you move it around, it will make it completely smooth and take it off the grid. So that's really useful for, for placing props and stuff. Um, and this brings us to displacements. So something uh, that I've seen is, say this is like a flower bed of sorts, and this is soil and this is the, the thing. They select it and go create displacement. Yeah. And you know, that's great. Let's paint it. There's my flower bed. But the issue with that is that say if we take this away, the whole thing is a displacement, even on the faces that it's not supposed to be displacing. It's only that face that you want really. And you don't want to do that because it's more intensive on the engine. It um, displacement re bleh, displacements receive different lighting in comparison to um, you know regular brushes, and it also gives the false impression that this would now seal the map. Um, displacements do not seal the map. So, for instance, if this wall here was a displacement, say it's like a mountainous wall, this is facing the void. Your map would then leak. Um, and what you need to do is place uh, no draw. Uh, blocks, world world brush no draw blocks uh, around it to seal the map essentially. Uh, so what you should do if we destroy this is go to the face tool, select the face you want to displace, create and do it that way. It will destroy, <clears throat> pardon me, it will destroy the rest of the brush so keep that in mind which is why say for the example of a flower bed you need to then make um, the sort of the outside of it so that you don't just have uh, a random void which is why these walls are here right so you need to build around your displacements um, and I think that about covers it so to sort of summarize scale Make sure you put your man down. Use a door prop if you really want to, uh, to really help you out with what the scale is supposed to be like. Um, don't use big hollow skyboxes. It messes with the way your map looks. It creates bad uh, sort of mapping. Um, I can't think of the bloody word. Practices that you get yourself into. Cuts portals up badly. Overall, just a really bad way to map. The only way, that, the only reason you should be doing this is if you're building a map that's in open space, like Zen or outer space, where you can see the bottom of the skybox because you're floating around and whatnot. Um, funk details. Make sure to not create um, your map entirely out of world brushes because the engine will throw a fit and it will take forever to compile and it might even potentially create some performance issues because the engine's working harder to figure out which um, viz clusters that it needs to turn off and on as the player travels through the map. So make sure what you're, you know when you build your map the world brush part should be very simple cuboid shapes only and then everything else should be funk detail. Um, you know, if you if you need to create a pipe or something that um, you would otherwise uh, have as a world brush, create a really basic uh, box around it and then build the pipe inside that box and make the pipe funk detail. Um, and grid size, don't use grid size one unless you're doing some really finicky vertex work or perhaps detailing. Um, it's definitely something that is uh, it's something that you use as like a scalpel, a tool. You shouldn't have it on all the time. You should be on grid size 16, preferably 8 is also okay. Any smaller than that and you're sort of getting into sort of dangerous territory messing about with your brushes. And then lastly, displacements. Only do your displacements one f on one face. Don't just select, you know, if Obviously, if you need displacements on every side of a brush, then then do it. But I highly doubt that you do. Um, you should be selecting the face that you want to have displacements on and doing it that way. Okay, so hopefully this helps those of you who uh, who are 
sort of newish to mapping and are sort of getting a little bit more serious about it, wondering, you know, why does my map look crap? Why are my compile times so long? Um, if you want to look into more detail into how uh, viz leafs work and, you know, all this portal blue liney shizzle, what does that all mean? Um, and how to optimize them even further, like like in this example, even though the room was, you know, perfectly optimized with a proper skybox and there was nothing else in it, it's still creating a, a split here because of the way it, it, it uses the grid. Um, you can fix that using something called a viz cluster. But, as I said, that's more of an intermediate thing. Look it up if you're really interested. The most important thing is that you know to optimize your skybox properly and that you use funk detail properly. And uh, if you do get a leak, just a very quick tip, most of you might already know this, so let's force a leak. If you go to map and click load point file, it will literally draw a line as to what is leaking and where. So you follow the red line, whoopsie doodles, it seems like I messed up my brush there, and now you know that you can seal it. Okay, uh, that's everything, and if you have any questions, post them in the comments and I will help you out how I can. Bye bye.